If you like this video, please subscribe and click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. Please also consider supporting us on Patreon. Today, we're going to talk about NDI, OBS, and Zoom, and how to get them to work together. <laughs> Welcome to Pull My Focus, Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking, where we bring you the inside tips on making great digital film and video. Now, there are a lot of you out there who have probably installed Zoom, the video communication software that lets you conduct business, hang with friends, and keep in contact over the internet using a webcam and a microphone. And there are those who, like me, use OBS, which is open broadcast software to record and stream video. Now, there's been a lot of confusion about how to integrate the output of OBS to the input of Zoom to allow more engaging presentations. Well, we're here to tell you about a protocol that although it's been around for a while, is really starting to pick up steam in the consumer space. And it's the answer to your OBS Zoom questions. Now, if you're here simply for the instructions on how to get the output of OBS to work to the input of Zoom, simply skip to the time code that's shown on the screen right now and have at it. We don't wanna waste any of your time with a history lesson. But if you got a couple of minutes and want an explanation of what NDI is and why you should be using it, then sit back and I'll tell you a little story. Okay, that's very nice, but this, this is, is not a dream sequence. Now, way back in 1985, a company called New Tech was created. Its founders, Tim Jennison and Paul Montgomery, released visual imaging software that I, along with many other Commodore Amiga owners, bought and used. That's right. I've been a new tech user since they released DigiView, a color video digitizer, and DigiPaint, a paint program that allowed you to create and edit images in a staggering 4,096 colors on screen, which in 1985 was friggin' huge. New tech went on to pioneer a broadcast quality switcher called the Video Toaster. Yeah, that was the real name. Every transition, every transition, digital effect, digital effect, graphic, graphic, title, title, and animation, and animation, you're about to see, you're about to see, was created entirely with the video toaster, the video toaster, from New Tech. Now this thing could do what systems costing nearly $100,000 for only $4,000. In fact, the package included a 3D modeling program called Lightwave that was used to create some of the space battles and effects in the popular science fiction series Babylon 5. It was what they called a paradigm shift a paradigm in the broadcast shift. industry. The hell was that? I also owned a video toaster and absolutely loved it and did productions that were absolutely terrible. Go, go money, go money, go money. And so's our man on the field, Mike Marino. Michael, uh, are you there? Can you hear me? Thank you, thank you, and welcome. Okay, here we go. Hold still, Spaceman. Okay. <laughs> Fast forward. The year is 2005. Although the popularity of the Amiga computer died down, New Tech continued with their line of broadcast switchers. The TriCaster was born. The name is based on its functionality, allowing it to broadcast, record, and internet stream all at the same time. This was an evolution of their video toaster system and they produced a ton of them. I, at the time, was heading up a team that did live streams for dance events and we used a TriCaster at every show. I also led a sort of news interview program on YouTube that was a four camera shoot with live guests and Skype interview sessions. It was the TriCaster that allowed us to capture our laptop computer displays and show them directly over our local ethernet network. Now, this was huge since we didn't have to run long HDMI cables or install crazy capture cards. This was my first exposure to their amazing NDI technology, and it wouldn't be the last. Okay, back to recent times. Now, I'm doing mostly post-production here at Pixel Valley Studio, but I still tinker around with things like OBS for my side game streaming hobby. And looking for ways to capture screens from other computers and smartphones into my OBS output I noticed a plugin for OBS called OBS NDI. NDI and New Tech are back in my life once again. NDI stands for Network Device Interface, 
and is for broadcasting high quality video and audio over an internal gigabit network. There's a ton of additional technical information that video geeks love, but I'll leave that up to you with links in the description below if that's what you want. Okay, Manu, if that's your real name, why is it something that I may want to get if I'm a content creator? What can NDI do for me? Use software like OBS and receive video and audio from other computers to record or stream. Install it on your mobile phone and use them as external cameras. Monitor multiple computers on a single PC. Since NDI is a bi-directional protocol, meaning that data can not only be sent from one machine to another, like RTMP or RTSP, it can also be sent back again, allowing control of PTZ cameras and tally lights. This is a side note, but because I know you want to ask, yes, there are cases where you can use NDI over a Wi-Fi network, provided the router is capable and at least one of the computers is on an Ethernet cable. But Wi-Fi use cases are better suited for NDI HX, which is a variant of NDI that NewTek developed specifically for wireless transmissions. Phew. Okay, so now that we know what NDI is and why you might want to use it, here's a great use case that should inspire you to install it and use the freely available tools that NewTek provides. Let's get the output of our OBS install and send that to an input directly into Zoom. First, we need to go to ndi.tv to install the NDI Tools suite of apps, which are available for both Mac and Windows platforms. I'll be doing the Mac install here. NDI Tools comes with a bunch of applications for various NDI uses, but the one we want to look at for this case is called the NDI Virtual Input. Scroll down the page and click on the link for the download. Unzip the package and you should see an app called NewTek NDI Virtual Input. This package installs an NDI Virtual Input, which looks to your system like a simple webcam. Once you run it, you'll see the NDI option show up in your taskbar or menu bar. Now, unless you have software running on your local machine or local network that is outputting an NDI signal, you won't see anything in the sources yet. But let's fix that. If you haven't installed OBS, download it and get it running. I won't be going into detail on OBS in this video. That's a whole nother video. But I will show you how to get uh, your output of your program scene via NDI. Now for this to work in OBS, you will need an external plugin called OBS-NDI. Link in the description below. It must be installed so that OBS can use the NDI protocol to capture and broadcast NDI audio and video. Jump to the GitHub repository for OBS NDI and download the latest version for your computer. As of this recording, we're using version 4.9.0. Once installed, you may have to restart your system. But once you run OBS, you should see a new option in your tools menu entitled NDI Output Settings. Let's click that. You'll see a window like this, with main output and preview output checkboxes, along with the ability to edit the name. Checking either of the boxes will send the main or preview output of OBS to NDI on your computer and broadcast it over your local network. As long as that's checked, it'll send output whenever OBS is running. So don't forget to uncheck it if you want to save network bandwidth. This is all you have to do on the OBS side. So any production you do in OBS is now being sent to any listening device over NDI. Okay, let's get the final part of this and put it into Zoom. If you already have Zoom installed in your system, do yourself a favor and go to the Zoom menu and choose Check for Updates. We want to make sure that we're running the latest version. Once you have Zoom, OBS, and NDI Virtual Input all running together, now's the time for the magic. Make sure that OBS is sending something and that the main output is enabled. Go to your taskbar, menu bar, and click NDI. You should now see a name that looks like the same name in your OBS NDI output. Click to select its stream. Now open Zoom. Now we don't need to be in a call, we can just check to see if it's working by going to the settings and video options. You'll see a new camera appear in your list of available cameras called NDI video. Select that and now you should see the output from OBS appear in your camera test window. Magic! 
You can also do the same with audio in Zoom. Now, NDI sends video as well as audio together. So long as you're sending audio from OBS, it will be sending it over NDI. In Zoom, you can choose to use the audio input under the microphone called NDI Audio. This will be the audio feed directly from OBS. And that's it. Your amazing production from OBS will be seen in your Zoom conferences, and you don't have to do things like request screen share access or wait your turn. You can just activate it. Oh, one quick tip. If you want better audio, you should go back to the settings in Zoom app and go to audio. From there, click advanced and disable the two background noise options. I personally find that it sounds a bit better when these are disabled when you're using the NDI audio option. Like I mentioned, the NDI virtual input makes your computer think it has an additional webcam installed and you can select any live NDI feed to display on that virtual webcam. It can be your local computer or anywhere on your local network. Here's an example of a bunch of different computers on my local network broadcasting via NDI. On a different computer, I'm running an additional package that comes with the NDI tools called the NDI Scan Converter. This takes every display from the computer and broadcasts its screens as separate NDI feeds, allowing me to choose any one to view. One other option is having NDI installed on a mobile device. NewTek offers NDI broadcast apps on Android and iPhone for free. These run over your Wi-Fi network, so make sure it's a fast one. Hopefully you now see the awesome benefits of this flexible protocol. And you can use it for free on your computers, but there are also NDI ready routers and other devices available for purchase. I've got it running on pretty much every machine in my home. It's just that easy. Hope this helps. Make sure to check out pullmyfocus.tv for the companion articles that go along with these videos. And let us know how you're using NDI in your home or office environment. I use it a ton. Hopefully everybody can start using it. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one.